Hello once again ladies and gentlemen, this is Graz and this is what's inside my computer system. As you can see, it's already been stated, it's definitely water cooled. We have some purple coolant flowing through these water pipes in here, or these water tubes rather. So we can see here's our pump along with our 950 watt power supply. So anyway, this system was used to make over 256 videos and today we're going to get an upgrade. We're going to do lose our old AMD dual core processor, 3.0 gig, and we're going to move up to the Intel Pentium 3770K processor. So, by all benchmarks, everything looks pretty good, and we should be good to go for the most part. Now, of course, the first thing is we'll have to disconnect all of our wiring, at least to most of our main devices, and at some point, we'll have to actually disconnect and drain the water lines themselves because that water block will be coming out and it will be getting replaced. Now this is a dual core water block but it's not really meant for the newer ones, it's kind of like for the AMD systems. So that's something that we'll have to replace. We already have our water block from Frozen CPU, thanks to them. And all that's left is to go ahead and replace the old parts. So anyway, the new system is going to have roughly about the same memory as the old one has, about 8 gig. And like a processor wise, it's going to be a massive upgrade. It's not going to be too different, but processor wise, it's going to be a lot stronger. Alright, so the processor is out. This is our AMD Phenom 2. This was our dual core 3 gig processor we had. And like I said, this was the one that did over 256 videos. So for the most part, it's still pretty good. It only shut down once, once it accidentally overheated. That was when the cooling fans to the radiator shut down. But other than that, I mean, it was pretty much water cooled the rest of the way. So I'm just going to hold on to it for now. Lord knows uh, what I'll do with it, but who knows. I might build another system with it. I do want to hold on to it, like I said, but yeah. There may be some use for this who knows when anyway the system is now laying down on its side as you can see I'm in my kitchen I don't want any static from any carpeting or anything so the water block is off there is our socket our socket AM3 as a matter of fact water block is detached from the processor as you can see still has a lot of well has a lot of, has a lot of arctic ice on it or whatever well, it's not arctic ice, but you get the idea. It's um, heating conductive. Anyway, it's got a lot of it on there, and it's going to have to get cleaned off at some point. This water block is still very good. It's from Danger Den. I don't know if you can see the D over there. But it's a very good water block, and once, like the processor, it may still have plenty of uses left in it. So I'm going to hold on to it. And by the way, this board is totally unscrewed. So once we get this drained out, we can go ahead from there and get the rest of the board out. We'll have to move the pump, and I think that may be our only obstacle at this time would be the pump. I don't think any of the, uh, the tubing should be a problem. Great thing about cleaning this, it's pretty easy with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I believe this is 91-92% rubbing alcohol. So we'll go ahead and put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on there and we'll clean all this old gook off after a while you'll start to see that it actually gets a lot cleaner it's hard to do right now with one hand holding a camera and the other hand holding the actual stuff but it'll take a few minutes and after some cleaning you'll start to see the bottom and it'll shine off really nice see if I can't get there we go maybe it's too much light but if you can see it it's starting to come pretty clean right there. Alright, so we've already cleaned off our processor. We've cleaned off our block. As you can see, it's now drained for the most part. I've got to take some distilled water and run it through there. You never put tap water through any of your water cooling system because the minerals in tap water will corrode your system. Now this is the purple coolant. I don't know how it's turning out right now with the camera. It looks kind of a different color from here, but anyway, yeah, you get the general purpose. Okay, so this is about to come out, and uh, we'll set up the new board, which is up on my countertop on a plastic wrap. 
and this is our Pentium system with processor already installed looks like they've already had the uh, the adhesive already placed on the processor, the actual heat conductive memory is already installed so for the most part this board's just ready to just drop in and install our components such like our video card and everything else and our video card, our Radeon HD 5850 it's old as dirt or since well it came out several years back but still it does the job just needs to get a little cleaning down there in a fan where a lot of dust have built up but for the most part it'll do for now until we can get something better alright so you may or may not be able to see it but we have our backing on for our block cooler for the CPU we have our little screws set up here here and then two more up top here are the actual plans of what we're going to have to do so the backing is on we have our little spacers on now we're going to have to put these things on these little black round things these are going to go on all four posts followed by our actual block followed by our little tiny springs actually these are two springs put together we can easily separate those followed by the actual top if I don't lose the top and it's basically a little tiny cat with a little little hole in the middle and it comes with this little tiny little allen wrench or allen key whatever you want to call it that'll go ahead and lock it into place so for the most part installation is pretty basic it's nothing really complicated of course, like I said, since I don't have a tripod, that may be on the list of to do things to get one of these days. As trying to put these screws on with one hand is not quite easy. So anyway, I will rejoin you guys once again once I make some further progress. And besides, I'm not really left handed. Alright, so with our little black pieces put on, you may or may not be able to see them we have the water block set up as you can see I reused the two attachment pieces from the previous one they're still in good shape so I no need to really replace them everything's set up the way it should be we have whoops holding it upside down rather our entry point for the water will be in the center and our exit point will be at the top the way it should be so what we will do is since this is actually sitting on its side I want to put it sitting in like this so let's see, we have our board set up. Try to properly align everything in a good position. Okay, so there, it's already sitting on the processor. The processor already has some Arctic Silver on it. So for the most part, we're pretty good. Our Pentium 3770K is sitting in nice and comfortably. Our water block is now sitting nice and comfortably on it. So the only thing really left to do is to go ahead and fasten her down. So as I had shown in the previous plans, we'll have to add the springs, springs after the block, and then we'll add our part SCM3F, which is actually the caps. And by the way, here is the parts that I all have. And these parts right here, this I won't need. These are for a different setup and this I just don't even really freaking know it just it just came because it just really came so of course we have on the back here all the various different setups and how it could be used and of course they give you a pretty good layout of what it should and shouldn't be so basically it shows you right here for the springs you don't want it too loose uh, you don't want it over tightened but you just want to snug it just right as it's illustrated here so basically it looks like the screw that will be going into the cap will be flesh with the actual cap itself this shows the screw is actually coming out of the cap this shows that it's not even at all it's too loose so it looks like it's a pretty simple setup and of course this down here is if we have the LEDs which we don't I got the simple black version because I like having it nice and simple all right, so we're just going to go ahead. Can we break off these screws around here somewhere? I just don't want to have these things shoot out violently everywhere. Okay, so there we go. All right, into one post. 
and then we'll go ahead and drop the other. If I can break these other two off over here because they don't want to come apart. They're like a married couple. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Okay, anyway, that'll be enough of the jokes. Right, come on, get get the hell off. Ugh. For a minute there, I was going to say, that would be the one that would shoot across the room and I would never find it. It would make this whole thing pointless. Alright, so there we go. There's our four screws. Here is our cap pieces to which we will begin to slowly put back on. And once again, I leave you guys off as I attempt to go ahead and put these things on properly. What do you know, I got it on the first try with my left hand. I'm actually getting better. Alright, so this is what it looks like with the block on. Everything is tightened up the way it should be and everything's set. So technically, I think everything else is ready. We can just go ahead and start lining up these holes and go ahead and put it in a computer case. So this is a look at the whole board in general. Now the one problem I will have is the fact that my CD burner is IDE, or well, it's basically not SATA, and so my CD player is not going to work. Poo on that. So unfortunately, a trip to Best Buy or basically a computer outlet store so I can get a, a SATA CD player or anything will be necessary. But other than that, I think we're pretty good to go. Now this is a different board. My other board was an ATX. This is basically a micro board. So it's a lot smaller. And considering my case is a full tower, this is going to leave a lot more space down the bottom. Now that could be a good thing for my water pump and everything, so I'm not going to complain about that. We'll probably leave more space for my, my video card as well. Okay, so like I said, it's a little bit of adjustment. Just looking at all my different options here. So other than that, it looks pretty cool and I can't wait to get this bad boy fired up. Hello, hello, we have an update. As you can see, everything's hooked up that can be hooked up. Uh, we don't have any cooling in yet, so... PC ain't going to get fired up anytime soon. The plan next is to go ahead and put cooling in, then get it started up. But the thing is, we're going to have to drop that radiator. Why? Because the radiator is actually the highest point in the whole loop, which means air is going to escape up there, and all of a sudden, we're going to have massive air bubbles. You do not want massive air bubbles in your water cooling loop. So, we put everything off, you know, we took it all apart, got everything squared, but now we have to, uh, we put it all back together. Everything looks pretty good. As you can see, the motherboard is a lot smaller, and to be honest, I kind of like it this way. I'm not going to lie, it's, it's nice. And everything looks a little bit more organized, I guess if you can call this organized. Yeah, there's still a lot of wires hanging around because of the fans and such, but still, it feels neater. Anyway, as you see, we have all the space down the bottom now. As I was saying, yeah, we're going to have to drop this radiator. We'll fill up the loop again with more fresh coolant after getting rid of the other coolant. And then we'll try to go ahead and boot her up. But until then, I'll see you guys in a bit to be continued. Alright, welcome back once again ladies and gentlemen. This is the last part. As you can see, we have cooling back in there. It may look a little bit uh, brighter, I guess you could say. Well, I just made sure the system was topped off. All the coolant is kind of like a little fizzy right now. So we have to top off the, the cap. And the air is going to escape now. So the little whiteness you might see is actually air bubbles. So as the air, little tiny bits of air, that's okay. I have my radiator down here to make sure all the air is being forced out. So everything is working out pretty good. As we can see up top, missing operation system, but that's okay because I kind of expected it with the new motherboard. We have to set it up for RAID, which I haven't done yet. But for the most part, everything is working out pretty good. We have a napkin in here underneath the actual cooler block just to make sure that there's no leaks. 
If there was no leaks, everything would have to be shut down immediately, and the computer would have to be basically tilted wherever the leak is over in here, and we'd have to make a disconnection and an emergency stop. But thankfully, everything is under control. We have no leaks on the napkin. There appears to be nothing, nothing on there, which is great. So for the most part, everything is up and running pretty good. Fan here seems to be, oh, okay, there we go. I was going to say, what's up with this fan? Just to be a wire, a little wire mishap. But anyway, that's up and running. Everything is up and running pretty good. And that's going to be pretty much it. So this is the last part of the video. I'm going to go ahead and reattach the rest of my stuff, my keyboard, my, well, you know, pretty much everything. So that way I can go ahead and get this operational and we can go ahead and go back to making some videos and even some live streaming. I'm hoping to if my video card permits, but everything else is here for live streaming and, you know, it is an upgrade. I'll say the least, it is an upgrade. So that's pretty much it for the system. So while you didn't get to exactly see me do the hands-on pulling out, ripping, and doing all the other stuff, it's been pretty much like a quick vlog of how the systems come along. So that's going to wrap it up. I hope you found it at least somewhat informative. Uh, maybe even learn a little bit about water cooling and how awesome it is and how careful you have to be or else it could it could wreak some real damage if you're not careful. It requires monthly maintenance to make sure the fans are working. Make sure you have enough coolant in there. But, you know, when it's working, you have a pretty badass system. What can I say? So, that's it. You know, I hope you have a wonderful day. If not, then just simply fake it. Leave comments, questions, or whatever not down in the comments section. We'd we'll love to hear from you. And I will see you again next time with my awesome upgraded working computer.